four hundred dollars. Four hundred, four hundred dollars. The biggest one was for fifty. There are a thousand ways to use probability in real life, but in this video, I'm going to show you how to use math to increase your probability of winning scratch-off tickets. Joan Ginther is famous for winning multi-million dollar payouts four times on scratch-off tickets. That kind of luck happens once every quadrillion years. To give you an idea of how big a quadrillion is, one quadrillion seconds was 31,700,700 years ago. But Joan's wins weren't luck. She has a PhD in math from Stanford. That gave her an advantage. And later in the video, I'll show you how she did it. A guy called Mohan Srivastava discovered in 2003 the winning tickets had a numerical pattern. Part of it wasn't stats so much as sleuthing about looking for patterns in the cards. The secret he uncovered was that winning scratch-offs had a certain numerical pattern to them. By using math, he figured out what cards were more likely to win. He estimated he could make $600 a day from his trick, but that was a lot less than he could make as a statistician. These aren't the only people to game the system. There are many other hacks, as well as numerical patterns on the cards. There are a slew of tips and tricks on the internet, like white lines on cards, calculating odds and expected value, buying in bulk, playing the more expensive cards, but which ones work and which ones don't. I enlisted the help of some friends to analyze the winning tickets. We figured out which tips and tricks worked and which did not. To make this experiment scientifically sound, I used a statistical test. But don't worry, I'm not going to show you the steps for the test, but I will share the results. I'll also show you the only technique that guarantees you'll win something. Let's start with some basics. Scratch-off tickets range from a dollar to $30. They're deliberately made attractive and shiny to sell more. You can play crosswords, games like Monopoly, or scratch off gold coins or dollar signs. But not all scratch cards are created equal. Don't play shiny or fun because the more expensive cards have better odds. Some cards have zero prizes left. In fact, at any time, around 10% of cards have no prizes left at all. You don't want to play those games. This money multiplier costs $5. It states on it the top prize is $500,000. But you have a zero chance of winning the top prize because they've already been won. It's perfectly legal to keep on selling the tickets after all the prizes have been won. So do a little research before you buy a ticket. Go to any state lottery website and see which tickets have zero prizes left. So assuming you've looked at your state lottery website and found the cards that you shouldn't be playing, let's delve into the techniques that you can use to improve your odds. Let's answer the question, do winning cards look different? Mohan Srivastava's trick was to note how many times numbers appeared on tic-tac-toe cards. Tic-tac-toe cards with single numbers were more likely to win. Cards with repeated patterns had fewer winners. Unfortunately, that numbering pattern is no more. There also used to be codes printed on the tickets to let you know what you'd won. For example, O-N-E for one or F-T-Y for 50. However, these cards have been discontinued. In our search for truth, we sorted through this pile of winners. We looked for markers like white lines or numerical patterns. We collected our data and ran a hypothesis test. Were the differences random or were those differences statistically significant? The result of our test was that any imperfections were likely due to random imperfections during production. Let's say your card does look different. Say it has a white line on it. 
It's just a random event. But let's say we're wrong and you crack the secret code and figure out the winners do look different. You can't see the cards you're buying because they're on a roll. The conclusion, winning cards don't look different. And even if they do, it won't up your odds of winning. The next tip increases your odds a little bit. Buy groups of cards, say 10 in a row of the same game. You can even buy an entire roll of cards. They're not actually on rolls, they're kind of flat. This might cost you several hundred dollars or more, but there's actually some very good science behind this tip. Scratch off ticket prizes are not random. Winners tend to be evenly spaced throughout the rolls. The manufacturer has a certain dollar amount, say a million dollars, that they have to dispense throughout the game. If they printed the prizes in a truly random fashion, they could award tens of millions of dollars just by random chance. They have to limit the number of winning cards to a set amount. They might have to award 250 winners in every thousand card run. There will be some randomness, but not every fourth or fifth card is going to be a winner. You can increase your odds of winning by buying 10 at a time, but it's not a guarantee of a win. I bought 10 in a row and they were all losers. There's another good reason for buying cards from the same game. The probability of winning increases every time you buy cards from the same game. Imagine there's a million tickets in a game with one big prize. If you bought 10 tickets, your odds of winning are one in 100,000. If you bought 100 tickets, your odds increase to one in 10,000. Buy 1,000 tickets and you have one in 1,000 chance of winning. This is the logic that Joan Gunther used to win her millions. However, she didn't buy 10 in a row or even 1,000. Experts estimate she purchased 80,000 tickets worth $2 million or more. But she did win $15 million, so it's not a bad investment. I'm assuming you don't have $2 million to plonk down on cards, so you can use another of Miss Gunther's tricks. She also played cards with higher expected value. Expected value is kind of like an average. The calculation is the total amount of remaining prizes divided by the total amount of money it would cost to buy all the remaining tickets. To explain how it works, let's look at a specific card. Fastest Road to a Million has about 8 million tickets remaining. At $30 per ticket, it would cost just over $241 million to buy all the cards that are left. Divide the remaining prizes by the cost to buy and you get about 82%. If you were to spend $241 million on buying all the remaining tickets, you'd only get back 82% of your money. You'd lose 18% of it. That's actually pretty good odds for scratch-offs. Some tickets have an expected value as low as 40%. You'll have a much bigger chance of a win if you play tickets with a higher expected value. Overall, the vast majority of people that play scratch-off tickets will lose 70% of their money. The odds are heavily stacked against you and heavily stacked in favor of the states gaining a lot of money. They keep about 30% of the $60 billion spent on lotteries every year. So back to that statistician who had a pretty good trick for finding winning tickets. He had some wise words for scratch-off ticket players. In an NPR interview, he said he didn't think anyone could make a living off of scratch-off tickets. So if scratch-off tickets are your hobby, then enjoy. But if you're in it to win big, then you might want to play a game with better odds. All right, all right, so what, what did we win? I won about 85. Oh my God, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, okay. I've got $54 and would not have broke even. They would have cost me 63 to buy them. Wow. <laughs> well, it's, it's, are you the big winner? Big oh, winner. oh my gosh. $103 worth out of $63 worth of tickets. But I scratched a whole lot more. We did. Oh gosh. We scratched a whole lot more. Oh. 
So, oh my gosh. I, I mean, I'm in the hole, like $400. Wow. <laughs> $400. $400. It was for $50. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. One big one, and we yeah, didn't get any. Uh, I was going to split my winnies, but we didn't get any. That was like <laughs> okay. Yeah. This is like really sad. I'm like going to split split the winnings, and I'm getting the cards back. <laughs> <laughs>